We left off on Proverbs 15, 13. A happy heart makes the face cheerful, but heartache crushes the spirit. I'd raised my voice for a good reason. Now we're on Proverbs 15, 14. Okay. The discerning heart seeks knowledge, but the mouth of a fool feeds on folly. And I just talked about how they were putting their emotions above the wisdom of choosing God's son. And of course, the wise in heart are called discerning is another scripture uh, in Proverbs. I think I just hit the mic, so if it, it sounded funny, I apologize again. I was saying the wise in heart are called discerning is another scripture in Proverbs. We see in Proverbs 8, it says, Does not wisdom call out at the highest point by the gate? It says, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, which means seek ye first wisdom. It says, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And it says that the fruit of the righteous is wisdom. And you know them by their fruit. You know the righteous by their wise actions. If their churches don't scramble to obey God through me at the first sign that I'm here, then they were never the sheep of God and they need to repent while there's still time and they cannot self-direct after I'm gone. No one is right with God after my flesh dies. That's it. Can you imagine the arrogance of people who continue anyway? Disgusting as it gets. So a happy heart makes the face cheerful, but heartache crushes the spirit. The discerning heart seeks knowledge, right? It seeks knowledge of God. And it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If they don't fear God enough not to reject me, and keep in mind, I'm not a womanizer. I haven't been on a date since like, uh, excuse me, 19, since 2017, I believe it is. Okay, I haven't really had a serious romantic date since something like that, maybe 2017 or early 2018. Six or seven years. It's 2024 in February now. So me telling women to submit is like the least they could do, so to speak. But they're not going to do that almost certainly. Why? Because John 8 was right. They are the children of the devil and their inclinations is like the devil. So imagine they're a witch or some of any race. Okay. And they say that their craft, their witchcraft, instead of their, the, 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 the path of following God, they have a craft. They're crafty. That's how the snake in the Garden of Eden was described. Crafty. Masonry, the craft and the brazen serpent, and the Luciferian doctrines that they teach according to Pike's moral and dogma. Again, Pike was one of the most celebrated Masons in human history, might even be number one. Crafty, sneaky, diabolical, devious, cunning. These are not positive traits. So it doesn't take a genius to see that if they use their head They'll put serving God above their emotions. You know who else doesn't put serving God amongst, above their emotions? Serial killers and child molesters. I challenge you to debate on this topic. If you say, hey, that's not a valid comparison, then I challenge you to a debate. My goodness, you imagine, I don't, I don't get that that's a valid comparison, okay? My goodness. My goodness. If one apple plus one apple equals two apples and two oranges plus two oranges equals four oranges, where you're comparing apples to oranges. You really don't understand why that's a valid comparison. My goodness. Anyway, everyone seeks lower for the adversity that has been occurring during this video. Verse 19, Proverbs 15, 19. The way of the sluggard is blocked with thorns, but the path of the upright is highway. Now listen carefully. See, this is a great example of how you put this together. If you need to scramble to the to the on the path of righteousness. So yeah, walk in the way of righteousness along the path of justice, right? It's talking about wisdom, Proverbs 8, 20. And you need to walk in the way of righteousness along the path of justice, okay? To the tip of the, uh, the, the mountain, Mount Zion, spiritually speaking, to climb the mountain, to get to the mountaintop, okay? Where wisdom calls out. And those who are wise enter into the house of the wise. See Proverbs 8, Proverbs 9, Okay? She built her house on the on the pillars of the religion, uh, of, of, of morality, of moral precision. Okay? And you're a sluggard. You're too lazy. You're too, you're, you value your emotions, right? Lazy people, they don't feel like doing it. They don't feel like submitting to God if they're an attractive female. They're a sluggard. You're too lazy to face the adversity that comes with submitting to God's son. So you're a good for nothing, lazy, this, that, and the other thing, right? And if their path is blocked with thorns and the upright's path is a highway and you need to scramble, like it says in uh, Psalm 119, run in the paths of God's commands. And you see Proverbs 12, uh, 
I want to say 26 or 28, where it says, I walk, uh, righteous, in the way of righteousness, there's life along that path is immortality. Okay? And then my hands have gathered up the wind. So I'm gathering up the wind to take on the enemies of God, holding the wind in my fists, the right hand of God, the striking hand of God. We see a lot of scriptures that talk about in Isaiah, for example, that talk about the striking hand of God. Isaiah 30, okay, you know, from like uh, 26 or so all the way to the end. It's holding a club. It's holding a rod, the blows of his arm. So my hand has gathered up the wind, the striking hand. And in Isaiah 30 also we see it says, you know, his arm coming down with raging anger and consuming fire with cloud burst, thunderstorm, and hail. Right? The wind, the cloud burst, the thunderstorm, the hail, the lightning. And their path is blocked with thorns, and their only way they can save their souls, and in this case also their offspring if they have them, or if they're going to have them, and or, is to scramble to obey God through me, then my martial arts, the way of the righteous, like it says in Proverbs, is the undoing of the wicked. It's a curse to the wicked. It's a blessing to the righteous. They want to see justice. They want to see wisdom and righteousness. They want to live it. And those who disagree, right? Why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? Folly brings joy to one who has no sense. But whoever has understanding keeps a straight course. That's Proverbs 15, 21. Okay? Straight course. It's a highway. You're supposed to scramble. You're supposed to love God with all your heart. You're supposed to keep the golden rule. Would you, you know, that's part of how you get your direction, your moral compass, your, your divinely moral compass, your precisely moral compass. And not Masonic compass. No, 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 no. The compass God gives you, not Freemasonry. I'd be shocked if even a single Mason made it anywhere near heaven. Folly brings joy to one who has no sense, but whoever has understanding keeps a straight course. A person finds joy in giving an apt reply. How good is a timely word? There we go in verse 23. One of the most important book, uh, excuse me, chapters in all the Bible is Proverbs 15. How good is a timely word? So if heartache crushes the spirit, and I've been shunned all my life, and I've been telling attractive women to submit, is this just some, you know, am I, am I some freaking porn star or something? It was like, oh, I, I just want more. No. If they don't scramble to submit to me, not the Jews, the whites, the government, not the military, not the police, but to me, then their spirits will be destroyed with extreme prejudice. I promise you that. You think that, that making love is a small matter? God is love. You think that sexual immorality is a small matter? Outside the gates are the sexually immoral. If you do not keep my commands, and you say stupid things like you mean God's commands, I and the Father are one. And who are you compared to me? So shut up. Shut the fuck up. It's that simple. If you don't keep my commands, you're done. No ifs, ands, or buts. No, no crying and praying to God after I'm gone. That's not going to help. It's not just suggest. These aren't polite suggestions, as they say. A person finds joy in giving an apt reply. And how good is a timely word? After he said it in a very serious way, right? Those who don't serve God, they find death. Follies an unruly woman. Her guests are in the realm of the dead. Proverbs 9, six chapters ago. It says, by the way, scramble. To obey God through Christ, and I am Christ. What on earth is more important than your soul and the souls of your children? So if you're some kind of sniveling worm, it's like, but my flesh and my family members. Selfish is a plan word for see flesh. You're selfish if you choose their flesh over their soul. You're selfish if you look at this situation and you assume that there's no God and you trust the wicked when they say that they're, you're better off obeying them. That is selfish. That is petty, that is cowardly, that is sissy, that is stupid as it gets. You may as well put on a thong after that and a dunce cap and wear that the rest of your life. Because even that doesn't express how stupid that is. Dumb.